Today we're talking about contamination uh, and some of the biggest ways, most common ways that people run into contamination. Um, typically contamination is going to be from your inoculation process. It's either going to come from the inoculant that you use, from the syringe that you got, either the vendor that you bought material from is uh, just putting out unclean material. They're not testing their spores. They're not testing their liquid culture. Uh, they make a, a mistake while they're making it. Maybe they're uh, just some Instagram vendor and they're just pumping out material as quickly as possible, as cheap as possible. Um, they're not really testing everything how they should be. And so they sell it to you uh, with the hopes that you will blame somebody else for their issues. Um, a lot of the genetics vendors they can uh, say like, well, they're not for growing, so the, you know we, we can't take responsibility for that. Um, that. That might be the case, but even if you're not supposed to grow certain varieties, uh, the spores and the liquid cultures that they sell, uh, they should come clean because if you're examining them for the mycelium that you're buying or the spores that you're buying, you're not supposed to be looking at say trichoderma spores or trichoderma mycelium. You're supposed to be looking at the variety of mycelium or spores that you bought. Um, so even if they're going to try to say that, you know, you're not supposed to grow what they sold you, if you looked at it with a microscope as well, it's not supposed to, it's not what you purchased. Uh, so a lot of those vendors, they're not gonna have reputations online. Um, they might have a website where it has a bunch of fake reviews. They only have five star reviews. Uh, each product has, you know, like 10, 20, 100 reviews and they're all five stars. They don't have any four star reviews. They don't have anything, uh, you know, one star or two stars. It's just always great, 100%, um, which typically that's, that's a sign that something's not right. Um, no matter how good something is, there's always going to be someone who messes up and then blames you for it. So. Um, getting 100% uh, customer satisfaction just, just doesn't work. So um, yeah, those are the vendors you kind of got to watch out for. Um, with uh, selling bad genetic material, um, some vendors, they, they'll right away, you know, replace the, uh, the genetics. They, they know what they're doing. Um, they also know that, you know, a syringe, this might cost them 10 cents the water inside is basically free. Um, making a syringe is extremely affordable. So rather than deal with um, the backlash, they'll just send you out a, a new syringe. Those are the, the vendors that are good because they know that their product's not to blame. So if you have contamination and they send out a new one, they know that you're less likely to run into run into the same contamination again because their product's not to blame. So those are the good vendors. Um, we kind of do the same thing even if we know that our products are good and they're not going to be to blame for the contamination. We'll still send out fresh products to most people uh, whenever they run into issues just because we know if they try again with our product, they, they're going to have success with it if they fix any mistakes that they ran into previously, whether that's uh, changing how they did their inoculation, using a different vendor for their inoculation material. Um, yeah, they're gonna fix the issue that they ran into. So trying our product again, you know, it's not an issue for us. They're gonna try it, they're gonna have success with it, and then they'll leave us a good review. They'll tell their friends about it, whatever. We don't run into the issue where it's like, each time that they try our stuff, they're having the same problem because our, prob our product isn't to blame for those issues. Um, the other way, other than uh, the genetic material itself, the other way that people run into contamination is with how they're inoculating their bags. They're doing something wrong. Um, either they're using the same materials, the same uh, syringe and needles repeatedly. Um, that's pretty much always gonna run into contamination. Um, the moment that you open up a syringe needle, um, this already has hundreds of spores on it just by sitting here for a few seconds. Um, unless you're in a uh, clean room or you're working in front of a flow hood or um, 
like a Bunsen burner works too, but unless you're working in a very clean area, there's constantly spores in the air, it's just part of life. Um, so reusing these tips, uh, it just doesn't work. Um, they only cost a couple cents each, so it's always good to just buy more. Um, so yeah, reusing the, the needles, that comes up a lot. A lot of people will say like, oh, well, I bought bags from you, I bought bags from another vendor, I used the same syringe, and your bags went bad. And it's like, okay, well, you bought the bags from someone else two months ago, you used your needle, and they worked, and then two months later, you tried our bags with that same needle, yeah, it went bad, you had mold growing in your needle tip because the liquid culture, the spores, you know, you've got moisture in there. If it's liquid culture, you've got sugars in there. And so if you leave them in a needle tip for a while, it's gonna go bad, even if you flame sterilize your needle because this is plastic. Um, yeah, while I'm talking here, this is something else people also make mistakes with is they, they'll, unwrap everything so they get their needle they get their syringe unwrapped and then they go and they unwrap their needle and then they wipe off their hands with some alcohol uh, they wipe off their bag with alcohol and the whole time the needle's been sitting open and it's catching spores there so um, that's also something to keep in mind is once you unwrap your needle you need to immediately apply it so it's a good idea to uncap your genetic material and then open up your syringe tip immediately put it on and then once it's on this is still sterile inside of this this cap here because this is airtight it's packaged this way so it's not going to be uh it's not able to go bad just sitting once it's on the on the syringe it's a closed system here um whenever you are inoculating multiple bags another thing that people mess up with um they'll take some paper towels and They'll take a paper towel and they will inoculate one bag. Then they'll take their lighter and they'll flame sterilize their needle, which is proper procedure. But then they'll take a paper towel. It might have some, some rubbing alcohol on it and they'll wipe off their needle. Uh, that's probably the biggest reason why people get trichoderma contamination whenever they're doing multiple bags or even if they just do one bag. Um, Trichoderma is not affected by rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. Uh, it does not deactivate the spores and it doesn't really kill off the mycelium either unless you're like soaking that mycelium in alcohol for a while. Um, so what will happen is someone will have their paper towel sitting out and trichoderma spores will land on the paper towel. They flame sterilize their needle and then they take that paper towel that's covered in trick spores and they'll rub it on their needle, thinking that they're doing an extra step, being extra cautious, being extra safe. And then now your needle's got a bunch of spores on it and then they inoculate their bag and they inadvertently put a bunch of trick spores into their bag. So um, whenever you are uh, getting your bag ready, you just wanna flame sterilize your needle and then you can put a little bit out and that'll cool off your needle and you can right away insert it into your bag or you can just wait for a few seconds, wait like five seconds or so for the syringe to cool off and then inoculate your bag. Um, that'll make sure that you don't burn the rubber uh, injection port on it. Um, so yeah, those are the two main ways that people are gonna run into issues is with, uh, with the inoculant that they're using. The inoculant has bad, uh, bad spores or bad, uh, bacteria growing in it already. Uh, that's no fault of the, the person who's purchased it um, or the person's gonna make a mistake. They're gonna inadvertently introduce contamination to their project. Um, yeah, so that's...